And away we go. Welcome again to the Darren Green Show, your one-stop shop for celebrity gossip, news, and music, pop culture, and the latest gab on social media. Be sure that if you're watching this on YouTube to leave your thoughts in the comments, please be sure to leave a like. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, girl, what are we doing? Subscribe to that ZM channel, okay? And also for the audio listeners, hey, how y'all doing? Be sure to leave a rate and review for the podcast. We love those. We got to... Stay in that algorithm any way, shape, or form, honey, okay? And it is Monday. So shout out to the We Are You Radio listeners. I did not give you a show last week. I'm so sorry. Okay, let's be very clear. There wasn't a lot of topics to talk about in that time span. And I was just like, girl, what is this? What's going on? I was like, girl, there's nothing going on, honey. There's nothing going on. And then I also had some home stuff to deal with and all that other stuff. So I'll give y'all a rerun. I promise y'all I'm going to be on it. I'm going to be on it. <laughs> But I'm just like also brainstorming. I took that time to also brainstorm like things that I want to do for the show for the next year. Because this year is ending in a couple of months. If you think about it, like it's about to be November, like really soon. So, you know, I like to plot and, and think about how I want to elevate the show even more. I was just to get into the behind the scenes of what's, what we got going on over here. I want to get back to doing my interviews and you'll see that on the Monday shows, especially now that we're on the, you know, on air. <laughs> I want to have different creatives, artists, actors, whoever want to come on the show, child, okay? I want to open that back up again, but I was just also just brainstorming on what can I do to perfect the show and all that other stuff. So just because I don't be on air or I don't be recording, I don't give y'all an episode does not mean that I'm not working on this show internally, okay? Because we, it's just a lot. I'm just one person. I'm, I'm my own company, honey. <laughs> I'm like built into one child. I'm the assistant and producers and writer. I'm everything, honey. I'm everything. So there's some times where I just have to sit back and just evaluate how the show is going to progress. If you guys catch my drift, right? Yeah. Sorry about last week. (laughs) It's basically in a nutshell. (laughs) I'll try to be more visible. But yeah, I mean, I had a pretty basic okay week it was nothing going on other than working and going home and doing all that stuff that i do at home as far as watch tv child girl now let me tell you let me tell you what i've been watching child because i don't really have nothing to say about my week report but i can tell you what i've been watching honey if i don't <laughs> if i don't tell y'all nothing i'm gonna tell you what i'm watching i started watching the penguin show now if y'all know the batman with a robert pattison finance get him okay so i guess they did a spinoff because one of the villains on there was was the penguin and he got his own show now and it's like a crime show and i'm not really into the crime show like the side gotham type crime show they don't have batman in it if they don't got batman in it like why am i watching it but i was watching it because there was a lot of you know it's, it's a lot of people on the internet Talking about, oh my goodness, the Penguin show is way better than the Agatha all along show. Now, Agatha's on the Marvel side of things, okay? And that's a show about witches and, and different, very different in, in in genres, yet people are like comparing the two. Go figure. I'm watching both. <laughs> and I like both of the shows. So that's what I've been watching and, and really tuning into. It's really good. I like, like I said, I like the Penguin. I like the aura that it has. I love Agatha all along. Child, ain't nothing but a queer show. Okay, that's a queer Marvel show, and I'm down for it. We just got some, I don't want to spoil nothing, but we got like a <laughs> reveal at the end of the last episode that I'm like, oh my God, like why do we, <laughs> so we went there. <laughs> but I'm just like, I'm just watching a lot of stuff. I finished the Menendez Brothers, that story, it's Ryan Murphy and his crazy ass making this damn show. Girl, very underwhelming, very underwhelming. It was not like the Dahmer series. There was a lot of, because like I started, I watched a show and then I started watching like the documentaries that were about the whole Menendez Brothers case and stuff like that. And I just saw, girl, you were lying on a couple of things, like, or you were stretching the truth here (laughs) because I'm not even going to go into details because I don't want to spoil the show. If y'all want to watch it, go ahead and watch it. But I'm telling y'all I'm missing nothing. Y'all not missing nothing at all. And it was pretty much okay. But that's what I've been watching. Just to give y'all a little intro, it, we are five minutes into the episode. We can get started. I'm not going to hold you guys any longer. We got some topics to get into. I want to talk about Ari Lennox and how she's leaving social media in the wake of her having to cancel her shows and stuff like that. We'll get into that a little bit later. Um, we'll also talk about 
R. Kelly's daughter speaking out, saying that he did some devious things. We'll get into that. I want to talk about this uh, Darius Cooks or Darius Crooks, rather. Um, you tried to drag Tabitha Brown, and that didn't go well with him. And we also got to talk about Elon Musk and how he's trying to sell these dang robots to you and not even giving you all the full details of what... <laughs> I'll get into that when I get into that. All that and more coming up on the Darren Green Show. Okay, let's get into our first topic, which is none other than Miss Ari Lennox. Let me tell you something. I love this girl. I feel bad for her because I definitely felt like she was dealt bad cards. Let's be very clear. She recently announced that she'll be taking an exit from social media uh, in December The singer wrote, I don't believe I'll ever mature or be happy as long as I have it. So my last day of social media will be December 18th, my two year sobriety anniversary, which is like, I was like, oh, okay. I'm going to read this whole thing that she said, actually, because she did get into it like very extensively. And this is essentially what she said. Now, she wrote, I'm working on a plan to transition off social media for good. I don't believe I'll ever mature or be happy as long as I have it. My last day on social media will be December 18th, uh, my two years sobriety anniversary. I will be deleting Facebook, IG, and TikTok permanently. Okay, the fear of losing brand deals, music sales, etc., cetera, uh, will no longer keep me here. To all my beautiful fans, I'm just not happy nor thriving here. I'm, I have a very toxic, codependent relationship with these apps. Uh, my happiness is worth more to me than using these platforms to promote. I truly believe I can get creative with marketing elsewhere. I'm s- exhausted with the addiction to the internet and gossip and attention and validation and yearning to be in control of oversharing. And I just want to be free and complete. I would like to offer other spaces where you can find me. Shout out to her, okay? Let's give her a bomb. Like I said, I feel bad for Ari. I think she was definitely dealt bad cards as an artist. When we're talking about visibility, as far as recognition as an artist, like when I tell you the awards that she, basically the award category was her, they would give it to somebody else that wasn't even in that category really but just was like for example when she was like heavily nominated at the soul train awards this is something where she thrives that she is soul she is neo soul r&b whatever you want to call it they was giving it to people like doja cat and lizzo which i'm like okay yeah they're the big stars now but i'm just like dang they ain't want to give her no type of recognition like she gets no pushing and that could be due to the label that she's in now you guys already know what i'm about to say when it comes to them labels she's with dreamville And Dreamville is a company that was founded and owned and being managed and all that by J. Cole. You already know what I'm about to say about that. I do not advocate for any artist to sign a to a label that is owned by another artist. Okay, I'm just we are seeing the ramifications of that. Let's look at Chloe. Love Beyonce to death. But but, you get what I'm saying? What is going on with that? And all the other artists that you can think of that they're basically signed to these labels that are owned by other artists, other active artists. Now, that's one thing, too. I'm not signing to an artist that's active. You're still making music. The attention is always going to be on you. It's always going to be on you and the artists that are under your wing. Like we have to get like second best. We're getting shelved. It makes no sense that unlike J. Cole, Ari Lennox is the biggest artist on your small roster, very small roster. Yet she does not get the highlight. She does not get the attention. She is essentially shelved. They're canceling her shows. Didn't even know she came out with a a tour. And another thing, too, she had to cancel a show. And I'm just like, why are you touring in your album now yet? Like, this is, and I've seen that with Meg, too. Like, she started touring before her album came out. I think that's so weird. And and for some people, it worked. Like, it, it worked with Megan, sold pretty well on her concert you know, according to whoever's metrics, right? But for somebody like Ari Lennox, that's like still a breakout star and still trying to break into this space on a mainstream level, I think that kind of shot her in the foot because it's just like an album is the biggest promotion to a tour. And 
you doing like shows, singing your old songs and some maybe some singles, some new songs that you're going to tease. Like it's not building any hype. An album builds that hype so that people, okay, they love the music. They want to hear it live. And that's how you get you reel them in for your tours. But when you don't have the album out yet and then you're doing it, I don't know. I, I know that wasn't like a choice designed by Ari. I'm going to tell you that much. And we get it. She's definitely, they saying she dealing with a lot of tax debt, child. That's, that's what I'm hearing, child. That's what I'm hearing on the streets, honey. So, yeah, she's probably trying to tour as fast as she can because that is the best way an artist can get money. But also, y'all are not promoting the hell out of her. Y'all not. And I don't want to... Because I am that type that's, oh, yeah, these artists that own these labels, they're really doing a dirty service to newer artists that they sign on there. But I also don't want to blame it too much fully on the labels, too, because you can't make any you can't make everybody famous. You can't make every project successful. OK, it's going to if it's going to pop, it's going to pop. And if it's not, you know, there's nothing that promotion or just a leg up can give you. Um but I don't even think that they've even tried. I did not know that she was coming out with the album. I did not know that she was. And, and, and this is just my own anecdotal experience or whatever. I didn't know. Who cares? You understand I'm one person. But it's I'm looking at the comments and it's just, oh my goodness, Ari was having concerts. Like she's coming out with new music. She's announcing an album. Like we didn't hear about this. You know what I'm saying? It's not something that's public knowledge. And a label can only do so much, but try your best to try to elevate this artist in any way is just not there and i feel bad and i think also she has a presence on social media that has caused her a lot of stress from what i was reading on her caption she basically talked about how it's hard on here and i understand why she probably wants to leave to constantly be on social media you and it's crazy how I relate to her just on a creative perspective because we use this tool. We use this as a tool to promote our other stuff. If I can make a podcast without having to dissect this show in so many facets to try to convince somebody on Instagram or TikTok or Facebook to watch the full video on YouTube, because that's what I care about. I don't care about making these clips. You get what I'm saying? I want to... I just want to make the podcast and then post it and never have to think about it again. And then people will show up eventually. But unfortunately, we live in a world we can't do that. <laughs> okay. We got algorithms, recommendations, and all that. A good way to promote your stuff is to use to promote it in multiple different platforms. And it can get very draining because some days you'll post stuff, you'll promote things and, and post things in, in, in regards to promoting your show and stuff like that. And it, it do well. And then the next episode will be, we're not going to push it out that much. We're not going to, we're not going to give you that this time. So it's frustrating. It's frustrating. And in yearning for that validation, like she was saying in that post, I completely 100% understand. And when you're not getting the reception that you wanted after making, after just basically putting your heart out, putting your whole, whatever, your energy out to in, in hopes that somebody can see it, somebody can click on your bio and, and, and do all the other stuff that needs to be done. And it doesn't happen. It puts you in a depressive state. And I, yes, I 100% understand. I don't know what the magnitude is of a Ari Linux because she is a little bit, not a little bit, but a lot of it more got more eyes on her than me. Failing in that can definitely be like a detriment to your psyche. And I can understand why she probably wants to just like part ways with the app. There's many occasions where I want to part ways with the app. <laughs> there were a couple episodes. Actually, I, I did not promote it at all on Instagram. I didn't make no clips. I didn't do nothing. Numbers was, was decent. It could have been better. It's just some, it's some things that I think about because it's just like, what is the damn point? Especially... When I do think that, and another thing that she said about how internet really fosters, like, for people to be, like, depressed and stuff like that, because social media, it always shows what you don't have. Like, I'll flip through, like, my Explore page or whatever on Instagram and stuff like that and see, like, other podcasts and podcasts that, that are, they got the same kind of following to me, but they got, like, the studios and the camera work, and they got the teams and the nice, flashy websites, and it's just, you're looking, and I'm just like, oh, my God, we're on almost the same caliber. It's a little bit, because, they, let's be clear, 
And it's damn like you you killing it more than me. Y'all are doing partnerships and collaborations with other organizations. You get what I'm saying? It, it, and I'm over here, child, still with my little setup and everything. And it's just me. It can get depressing. And sometimes you can't like ignore that, especially when the algorithm wants you to see that. They, it wants you to see that so that you can be depressed because it keeps you on the app in some sort of way because it's, you're always keeping tabs on other people and all, or other situations that are companies or whatever. And it keeps you on the app. And that's how they really get you and they reel you in. I understand that where she's coming from when she says she wants to like leave it. Now, is she going to leave it forever or she's just going to have a like social media team or like her assistant or whatever post for her on her behalf or whatever. I think most artists should do that. Look, if I had the, let me tell you something, if I had a social media team, I would have did that a long time ago, child, because I, I don't even be on Instagram like that. I'm mainly on TikTok. I ain't gonna lie. TikTok is very addictive, but I will say TikTok does not show me content. It shows me a, a wide variety of content. And it's not like Instagram where it just shows you ooh, the content that you're, that they know that you're going to be like envious of. And that's why I don't stay on, I'm not on Instagram like that no more. Like I'm only on there to post and text people. But basically in a nutshell, Ari Lennox is going to do what she's going to do. I hope to see her come back. I hope to see her album that's going to apparently drop next year. I hope it thrives. I hope it does, you know, the numbers that it needs to do. Because she is a really talented artist that really gets overlooked by a lot of people and a lot of like other. I think because she came out kind of almost the same time as a lot of these heavy hitters, like a Summer Walker, Lizzo was big at that time, was really making some music and strides. Doja Cat was obviously around and, you know, doing her things. Um, she was like, you know, in the mix of all that and was like, OK, you're, we'll put you on BET. We'll have you perform whatever. Maybe we'll give you a little award or whatever. But then afterwards, we're just like throw you to the wayside. It's almost like Janelle Monet, like in the sense that Janelle Monet, she was when she came out, it was like, wow, this is like a breath of fresh air for a minute. But she came out with a lot of other artists and she like, you know, it, 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 she like her whole presence fell to the wayside. Anyway, like I said, I hope Ari Lennox. Live long and prosperous, okay, and stays away from social media. I think we all need to look. We all need to look at what she's doing and follow suit. Because let me tell you something: social media is social media now is really bad. It's just really bad. But hey, what do I know? I digress. We can move on. We can talk about our next topic because, girl, we got to get into some serious things, some serious allegations. Okay, we got to talk about all right. R. Kelly's daughter. Okay, she's doing a documentary. Okay, it's for the TVEI streaming network. Apparently, R. Kelly's daughter, Baku Abi, uh, we're going to call her Buku, Buku Abi. I'll call her Buku. Or I'm going to just call her R. Kelly's daughter child for the rest of the thing. Because look, I'm, I don't want you know how I am with names. She claimed that the R&B singer sexually abused her as a child, alleging that this occurred when she was just 10 years old. Uh, she said, in quotes, he was my everything for a long time. I didn't even uh, want to believe that it happened. I didn't know that it even that even if he was a bad person, he would do something to me. She said in the episode, I was too scared to tell anybody. I was too scared to tell my mom why I be strikes, why I be while she states in her documentary that she believes that Kelly deserves to be in prison, she emphasizes that she does not hate her father in a follow-up Instagram post. Okay, she shared that in quotes, I will start by saying growing up and throughout my earlier adulthood, I swore to never speak on my father or really anything pertaining to my personal life and what I've experienced for many reasons, but ultimately fear and I didn't want to remember. Now, R. Kelly's attorney is firmly denying that any abuse occurred in a statement told to EMZ. Kelly's attorney, Jennifer, says that Mr. Kelly vehemently denies these allegations. His wife made the same allegations years ago, and it was investigated by the Illinois Department of Children and Family Services and other unfolding. And the filmmakers, whoever they are, did not reach out to Mr. Kelly or his team even allowed him to deny these hurtful claims. It's a lot going on. This is definitely sad as hell. This is, that's crazy. First of all, I feel bad. I think that 
Yeah, like she has no reason to to lie about this. Now, if she really wanted to get something out of it or get some type of clout or whatever the case, she should have rolled the wave, the lifetime surviving R. Kelly wave. You get what I'm saying? Um, and it's not to say that she's not getting paid from this documentary as well, but this is like a smaller platform. This is not lifetime doing this. It's definitely, it could leave anybody to be like, mm, maybe her story is a little bit valid here. And she definitely... There's something to say here. R. Kelly was a troubled person, is, will always, will be just like a troubled person. I would not put it past him. You know, it's just, that's just, that's heartbreaking. That is actually really heartbreaking and just like very traumatizing. And I'm sorry, yeah, R. Kelly and his legal team were saying like, oh, it never happened and she's lying and this and the third. It's just, you said that with the last victims. And it was proven that it's not, that, that he actually did those things. And it's, it's it's not really helping your case. It's not, he, he, I think he did so much that it's just like anything that comes out about him, which like people are just inclined to believe it because he did the other stuff. Well, you messed with children, kids, girl, little girls, high school, some even middle school. You get what I'm saying? I hope that she finds solace and that he's away, he's being put away, and he's being held accountable, and he's not getting out anytime soon. That's all you, That's all I can say. That's all I will say about this situation. But yeah, I just wanted to bring that up because that was just like a big topic to talk about. We can move on, child. Now, why Joe Budden, just to get on, just, let's get a little lighter, child. Why did Joe Budden? Now he responded back to uh, the DDG, child. You, you, girl. Okay, so remember last time when we talked about how I think Joe Budden had brought up DDG and DDG responded and he went off and stuff and just went off the deep end, like really off the deep end. Like, it was crazy. We talked about it last episode. Go ahead, check it out if you haven't already. Uh, but Joe Budden made a, a counter response to uh, DDG. This is what he had to say. For me, nigga. Okay. True. Yeah. I don't feel like I need to apologize about a motherfucking thing that okay. I said. And oh. I'm here to triple down in some of the stuff I said. But he's a young kid, and I do like him a little bit after I researched, and I see some similarities in us, so I'm going to give him mercy because I can squash him like a fucking black-eyed pee in my hand if see, I fucking felt like it. See, you know the fuck you're talking to? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Right, you're on then, bullshit. Then like That's bullshit. Sometimes I be on bullshit. Mm-hmm. It. It. It, 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 and it. we just said just acknowledge your bullshit. I be on bullshit. Now yeah. what? Move. If you ain't with the bullshit, go to the treehouse, nigga. I'll hit you when I get back to home base. See, you didn't move out. You put a nigga in the treehouse, nigga. You put a nigga in the treehouse. They talking to you. You see him? Nah, you the nigga that don't care. We get jumped when you get jumped. No, but I would. No, that nigga don't care. What? That nigga make sense. This nigga said you the nigga. Y'all scared him. No, this nigga said y'all. Ah, here you go. Y'all. Nah. Don't speak. They be doing too much chat on there. But look, here's the thing. Was it that serious? No. Everybody's entitled to respond to however they want to respond. Joe Budden talked about him first and he followed suit. But I just like DDG's response. It was just like, girl, you just going in a little bit too much. It's not that deep. It's He just called you corny. That's what everybody been calling you. And I guess it, it really does get to you, you know, but you can't do corny shit. It's just, it's no, let's be honest. Uh, no, but Joe Budden's response, it definitely was like neutral. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay, Joe, we see what you said, y'all. He don't want to, he don't want to smoke. See that? He don't want to, he don't want to smoke. Cause now he said, and I'm going to let you slide. What? What? what Joe, what are you going to do? You should have read that boy. He called you old as hell. <laughs> anyway, I just want to talk about that. Cause that was something interesting. Some other topic that I wanted to get into, girl. My goodness, we got to talk about this fool right here because I've been actually waiting to talk about Darius Crooks. Okay, if you guys don't already know, Darius Cooks is some type of he's an influencer, content creator. He does a lot of cooking stuff. I was looking because I didn't know who he was until he started talking about Tabitha Brown. And that's the moral of the story here, right? He was talking about Tabitha Brown on live. Now, if you don't know who Tabitha Brown is, that is the like guru for clean eating, veganism, all that other stuff. She has like a lot of brand deals. She recently had a brand deal, current one that's going on right now in Target. She's doing pretty well. I love the stuff that she got there. Obviously, when I actually go to Target in real life, I actually see her stuff. It's not 
on the bottom shelf. But let, let, let me give you guys the rundown of what's going on. OK, so this chef, OK, named Darius Cooks, he went on IG Live and had a whole lot to say about Tabitha Brown and her target partnership. OK, he also went in on to say that he would not have partnered with the company if was given the opportunity. OK, here's what he had to say. And you get all your stuff. You hire all this labor. It's pre-sales. You sell all the eight cases to Target. Now watch this. Target puts your product on the bottom shelf. Target puts your product not in optimal eyesight. Target bought eight pallets from you. If you don't sell them eight pallets, guess what happened? You owe Target money. That's in the contract. I'm going to keep it right here. He said more stuff. We'll, I'll talk about it briefly into my, because I don't want to play his old video. Forget what he has to say, okay? I'm For lack of a better term, because I want to say something else, but we're on air. The audacity that this man has, okay? It's the audacity. And I loved Tabitha Brown's clap back basically saying, some people just have nerve. When you doing your thing, when you being successful, you got a, you got your family to get in order and everything. You got your family set up for life. You making money. You doing whatever. Some people just have nerve because that's all they got. Tabitha will read you down without actually reading you down. I love people like that. Shout out. Let me give her a shout out to Tabitha Brown because she really, I think she hit because she'll hit a nerve without actually doing it. Like people. Look at her life. And and it was, I remember there was this trend going around on social media saying, basically, if you got a problem with Tabitha Brown, that means you are dark sided or something. Like something is up with you because what is this, this woman don't bother nobody? This woman is the nicest person ever, like nice presenting. And y'all have the utmost to say. And I get into Wendy Williams. That's my idol. Not my idol, but I'll say like my career idol and idolize her in that way of whatever. But girl, why did you say something like what was what was what was the point of you talk about Tabitha? But anyway, some people have nerve, and after watching this man speak, you would think that he had some outlandish deal with one of the elite shopping centers like Kroger or Whole Foods or hell even Trader Joe's. No, you have you are just a cook guru influencer whatever you you post your you know you cooking stuff and and doing all this other crap and, I, and i'll be looking at the food and i don't want to talk about nobody food child because it because it may look it may not be like it's probably good food but it's just it doesn't look good it doesn't look good looking the food that's that, that don't look good but it tastes good maybe that's him i don't want to judge based on that but from what i've saw Okay, just just scrolling through your page and stuff like that. I'm like, this food is it, it looked like 100% oil, like literally canola oil. Um, I know a person that did not alter Popeye's chicken nuggets or chicken the chicken wings. You you use Popeye's chicken wings, added on some some freaking sautéed onions, peppers, and different various spices, and you. Th- Make, and I'm not lying. Go look on his page. He has it somewhere. Maybe he deleted it. But I know you're not speaking on Tabitha. You get what I'm saying? And somebody said this on TikTok. You got to watch the shoulda, coulda, woulda ass people. Y'all didn't do it. Ain't no, I should have did it. Or if I was her, I would have did this. Or if I was him, I would have did that. And I would. That's just like me telling Kempire. Shout out to Kempire. Cause he's doing his little, he doing his tour, his podcasting tour. I ain't ever did that day in my life. We're manifesting it. That's just like me telling, oh, I wouldn't have never had my little podcast show on that. And I never toured. Like, what sense does that make? But there really are people in this world that will talk about other people's journeys and where they are and where they should be or what they would do if they were at there. Like, and you're not there. I, I, I don't get it. I seriously don't get it. You're speaking like this man was literally speaking like he knew, like he saw Tabitha's contract because, of of course, they everybody that does a partnership with Target has the same contract, has the same deals and obligations and all this stuff. Yeah, you were there at the meeting. 
unless you got receipts of deals that were given to you that like you really have no room to talk. It was, you know what this give, it gave very much Bethany Frankel. Cause you know how Bethany Frankel would sit there. She would sit there and talk about somebody that she does not know. It says, girl, you're doing the game wrong. Here's how I would have did it. Like girl, who, like you don't even know me. We're not even in the same field. And you're talking about how I need to do stuff. But you said that the Target products were on bottom shelves. Let's be very clear. If somebody that worked at retail, somebody that's been a avid shopper, okay, in retail stores like Walmart, Target, all them, you know, some pl- things are in top shelves. Some things are in these areas for a specific reason. It depends on the store. Not every store is identical. Not every store will put certain products on the top shelf. Some of the top shelf stuff will be on the bottom shelf in other stores or other times of the year or whatever they want to move it. It's It depends on how it's being restocked. Okay. My thing is, did you take a poll? Did you just went to one Target and said and made this comment, or you went to like multiple Targets to to really fuel your argument in believing that oh they're not really pushing your stuff out like that on purpose so you don't sell a lot? Like, and and, and we and let's be clear, we had people in various locations of the world in, of the nation basically disproved they went through their local target and they said actually she is top shelf in some spaces and even in other stores she's literally she has her own section how about that <laughs> she's not even she's not even on the show okay she got her own section top to bottom is all tabitha got her name plastered on the section what are we saying what are we doing what are we, what's going on honestly and it's just weird behavior. But if we want to talk about metrics, because that's another thing that he mentioned in there, I wanted to bring this up. His whole argument is that she should have not did this deal with target at all. And that she should have with the follower count that she has, I think she has over 5 million followers. Don't quote me on. I think she does with the follower, the following that she has, she should have basically sold what she was selling at target on her, on a personal website. And Basically, she she would have made a lot more money because her five million followers would have essentially trafficked on that website and she would have took all the profit and all that stuff. And yeah, obviously big following. So that means just you automatically all every single follower that follows you is going to go onto your page and, and buy whatever you're selling to them. It's just simply not true. If you are a content creator and he is a content creator, so he should know this. I think he was just trying to he was trying to make a point. Because he thought that people don't know, but many people are content creators and many people understand that it's a very small percentage of your following. Okay. A very small percentage of your following will even click the link in your bio, let alone buy whatever you're selling. Okay. Most of the big name creators, they don't even convert 20% of their audience into purchases. That's 20%. Big, and I'm talking. I'm not talking about hundred thousand. I'm talking millions followers. It's not that common. You are relying on your hardcore fans when you are trying to sell anything. I'm not even just talking about selling. Like I'm talking about, girl. I post a clip on my Instagram. I got like what five thousand, no seven thousand followers, or whatever. And that's nothing compared to a lot of these other creators and stuff like that. Of course, I'm not going to get that much of a percentage back. But even people that got those followings and they post those clips on there, a lot of them are not going, they're not even clicking the link in the bio to watch the full video. And you can tell because of you can look at the metrics and you can look at the metrics of your uh, landing page. Now, versus you actually selling in a store where there's thousands of people that show up a day, you get what I'm saying? And it's not your following. It's like a more of a general public. You might get people that will see something that they they walk past her section or whatever. And say, oh, my God, I like that little tote thing. Or I like this little appliance for the kitchen. I don't know where it's from. Her name is on it, but her name is at the little thing, but it's not on the product. So I'm just like, let me just pick it up. It's like you you get that general public buying your stuff without even knowing that it's like from your stuff. Hell, a freaking racist Karen could pro- possibly have bought a tab of the collection or whatever she's selling or whatever and, and and not even know that it was made by a black person. Let's be very clear. So that, that's how you, that's how it's better to sell something at a store where there's like a general public of people rather than you trying to sell on your page where, okay, 
about three percent of your following is actually going to go on that website and, and actually buy something from your site. That's just like you. He should know this. He should know this because he's also a content creator. It made no sense. If you're trying to be genuine, why make it? Why put it on Front Street? Like you literally went on live, you pressed live, and was like, "I'm going to talk about this black woman today." And it's really, it, it was very crab in the bucket mentality. Child, we get like this. We definitely get like this when it comes to like black entrepreneurs. Like we are quick to call each other like out for having bad business. Now, look, if the business is bad, call it out. I have before. But girl, to sit there and sit in your car and to say that somebody ain't doing their job, their business right, they doing it wrong. I would never did it like Whew, child, embarrassing. Like, you thought you was embarrassing Tabitha, but you actually was embarrassing yourself. <laughs> and, and look, Tabitha ain't the girl that you want to mess with. She is not the person. This is, Look, let me tell you something. I'm not saying that she put runes on people, but she is definitely the anointed, okay? And if you come for her, child, you don't really prosper after. Exhibit A, we just brought her up in the beginning of the topic, Wendy Williams. Talked about her husband or something like that because he don't work or whatever. Uh, Cause he chose to retire early. That now I forgot the topic. Now I just it just came to me. You know, Tabitha made her response, and then you know we found out Wendy, your husband actually came out with a uh, he popped out with a baby by another woman. Took you out the game, actually. That lady don't mess with nobody. She mind her business. Okay, she be giving us tips on how to eat clean. You know, try to she don't really be trying to get us into the veganism. I'm, I'm a late bloomer when it comes to the veganism, but some of the stuff that she be cooking, I'm like, mm, I'm gonna try that one day. And, and just looking at her story, like she's a woman that overcame illness. She was bedridden at one point, and she was able to heal herself by introducing herself to veganism, and it jump started her career. And she brought riches to her and her family. If you have something negative to say about that, or just it's weird, and it's also coming from inside the house. Because you were not able to get to the spots that she was able to get to. And that's the issue here. That's the issue. That's the reason for this whole thing. Yeah, I wanted to talk about that for a little bit because I thought that was really annoying. But anyway, we can move on to our last topic, honey. <laughs> Girl, Elon Musk. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Where do I begin? Did y'all see this? Hold on. Let me, let me show y'all this for the, for the visual listening shot. Did y'all see this? Somebody come look at this. Disgusting. Okay, so basically Elon Musk ushers in a new era of driverless technology, okay? Unveiling the Tesla's high anticipated cyber cab. That was one of the things that he talked about. Do I have a picture of that? That's this little cylinder looking thing that don't look like it, it holds a lot of people. First he had this, this is the cyber cab, right? People can basically get in it's completely driverless like it drives itself you sit in there it's like a computer monitor in there you tell it where to go and it takes you there it's no wheels it's no gas it's you're just sitting and waiting for your destination to get to your destination okay yeah <laughs> and it's supposed to be when first and that's the other one that's like the cyber van or whatever that's supposed to hold like a bunch of people that looks smaller than a city bus honey that's only gonna that is going to hold about 20 people max not even 20 people. I say maybe 15, 13, like some odd number, right? But anyway, they said about the cyber cab, basically people will be able to own these cars. And let's say you're at your destination or whatever, you're home, you're cooking, you're out shopping for a long time or you're at work or whatever. And you know how your car is just sitting parked. Your car can basically go out and taxi other people. Now, I thought that was a, now that if that is that's an idea, then that's a good idea. He also introduced us these the optimists like this is a robot butler that can essentially do all of the house tasks. It can watch your kids. It can walk your dogs. It basically is like a profession, a personal assistant. Basically, that's what he said in quotes. And it was serving drinks to people and it was dancing and doing a lot of weird stuff. Like it was he had like Apple Expo when Apple like unveils like the new product that they're about to sell for the next year. And it's like this big grand event. Like people was really talking like, oh my goodness, he did better than Apple. And, and, and this was like a better situation or whatever. And I was like, at first, I'm not going to hold you. I was like, oh, this, he's really doing his, he, he's doing the damn thing. I'm like, oh my goodness. I was watching clips and stuff like that. What I thought was really like scary almost is that how 
the robots, they spoke like regular people. Like they were how robots speak, how when we speak to Siri and it's hello, how are you? And they have this like this robotic type voice. It's not like a regular voice. That's the robots were speaking like regular people. And I thought that was very interesting until I did some more research and I'm like, ah, he got me. He got a lot of people too. These things are being controlled by VR, somebody operating a VR headset. These things are being controlled by a actual person. They're not really, they don't have the full autonomy, basically. I did that by doing a little bit of research and a little bit of research goes a long way. Okay, let's be very clear. That's the moral of the story, guys. Do your damn research. These robots are freaking, they're being drived by people. Do y'all want this in y'all house? <laughs> Absolutely not. It's absolutely not. And that will explain why a lot of these robots, like they had, they had like different person, like they had different voices. Like it seemed, like I said, a real organic being. They spoke very crisp and clear. And even with the self-driving car, like the fully self-driving car, there's going to be somebody in an office controlling its whereabouts, whether it's like the, whether they have the full autonomy or not. There's going to be like a third person controlling the car. He even had, and there's facts to prove that because he had job listings for people operating various vehicles, VR headsets, basically the robots. And I'm just like, okay, so is, are we doing this just for the expo, just to show the possibility or what's happening in the nearby future? Or is the robots that you're going to be selling to people, is it going to be controlled by other people? Because that can be like some security issues here. Because if I get a robot butler, I'm not saying that I am. If I get a robot butler, I'm expecting it to be a robot. I don't want nobody, I don't want Paul from accounting or from whatever nefarious building walking around my house and seeing everything that's inside of my house as they're being like a mobile butler or whatever. That's weird. So it's, it's so once it's like commercially like able to be bought is it going to be is it going to have its full autonomy and even if it has its full autonomy you saying that it can walk dogs and, and watch kids and stuff like that what's stopping it from hurting somebody by accident or on purpose or whatever the case you get what i'm saying if you if a person tells it to off somebody is it going to follow it is it like i think that we're not having and that's the one thing that i miss with this whole expo why don't we have some of these ethic conversations, ethics conversations, excuse me, for these type of protocols? You can say, you can command it to do something and it may hear something else. And that might be detrimental to whoever's around. I think that I'm all for the future and I'm all for what's in store for us in the terms, of, in the sense that we'll have an easier life and technology will essentially take over, not take over, take over. I'm not like I robot, but I'm like, in the sense that a lot of the stuff that are, that we have to deal with, it will be a big relief, but I don't think the technology is here yet. I seriously don't think the technology is here yet. Elon Musk is the biggest con man in the history of con mans. Okay. He is trying to sell you the idea of a distant future without any real discovery. Let's get into that. He has rockets that don't blow up when they land. They they, they they go up into kind of space and they come back down mostly. Okay, we got self-driving cars. The cars are remote. We got robot butlers. Somebody's controlling it in a VR set miles away from the actual where the robot is. Girl, he's lying. He's lying. And if this does come out publicly, I don't see this coming out in the next, girl, maybe 10 years. Uh, this is, like I said, distant future. If he's able to come out with something that really works and is really like beneficial to people, I have nothing but blessings for him. I mean, at, at the end of the day, I'm not going to, you know, I don't know what it takes to have a tech company or whatever. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to nowhere, shape, form, tell him what he needs to be doing because look, this is not my ministry or my field, but I do know bullshit when I see it. Okay. And this is some BS. Okay. And let's be very clear on that. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't have this around kids. I wouldn't even have this around dogs at all. Okay. Mm -mm, the technology is not here yet. And you're hearing it from me. <laughs> 
But that is all, folks. Okay, we are done with this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. hope you enjoyed everything about it. We will be back probably Thursday, tentatively. We'll see. And until next time, I'm your host, Aaron Green, and this is The Aaron Green Show, signing out. Bye, y'all.